welcome everyone to the first episode of our onesie talk show <laughs> hashtag this is us but yeah so and my first amazing guest today is that one and only claudia so claudia please introduce yourself to the audience like your name what you do because i know you do money photography so yeah just let it go Hi guys, thanks Amy for having me here today. I'm so excited to be a part of your first episode. Um, so my name is Claudia, I am 25 years old and as Amy mentioned, I do a little bit more than photography. So on a career side, I'm a financial planner at the Hereford Group. Um, so that's something I do on a day-to-day -day basis as well as photography. On the photography side, I do portrait photography, wedding photography, lifestyle photography and a little bit of commercial photography. So that's a little bit of background about who I am and what I do. Yep, and I, I, I can agree with her on that because I've had the amazing opportunity of we've worked together quite often That's and like going to open days, <laughs> like packing the whole studio into the back of the, <laughs> the car. <laughs> but yeah, it's been awesome and thanks for joining me for my first episode and let's get right to it. All right, cool. So today the, 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 the show is not just about photography, it is about photography, but it's not about the typical um, photography explanation of how to do shoot and stuff like that. Today we're talking about the drama that happened <laughs> behind photography. So I'm gonna be hitting Claudia with questions that she has. I she has no idea the questions I'm gonna ask her. I have no idea the questions I'm gonna ask her. But we're just gonna get into the flow and go with it and chat about it together. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be casual, and we're just gonna. Go with the flow. I feel yeah. like you're throwing me in the deep end. Nah, nah, you'll be fine. You'll be it's fine. slightly stressing. <laughs> you'll be fine. All right, so the first question is, what's the most dramatic thing that has happened to you in photography? And when I mean dramatic, I mean in regards to like a client situation or I think I, I will let you decide what's the most dramatic thing that has happened to you mm. in regards to like maybe let's say something you're not prepared for. Like it just happened and you just had to like, Make it, make make it work. Yeah. In terms of like people interaction drama or like you're not working drama? Hmm. Which, which one Everything. are you going with? The most dramatic one. <laughs> the most, the, I have two most dramatic ones. I usually try and avoid drama point. Yeah. That's usually the first route. Avoid <laughs> drama. Yeah. If that one doesn't work and drama pops up, hmm. then, we, then we deal with it. Yeah. Um, so I've had two, I can say, drama situations. The first was actually with uh, what everyone likes to, like, to call uh, collabs. Oh, okay. We okay. love collab drama, okay. no? Okay. 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 <laughs> everyone loves collabs. Everyone wants to be a part of it. And then, yeah, I think I just burnt my fingers once with that. So it was just collabs mm. that I did with someone. Mm. Um, and there was just... I don't even know how to, to like explain it. There was... We weren't on the same page. Okay. So it ended up with her trying to sue me for photos and me threatening to delete everything. So now we have collab contracts. That That's like <laughs> a very Definitely. important thing now. I, I, um, think it, I think it took me a while to adjust to the idea of the contracting because as much as I try to make things not too formal, because I believe like <clears> when <throat> things get too formal, it defeats the whole it fun of it. So I try to keep it casual, but then people tend to take advantage of that. So contract just had to come in. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a problem. And I think... What makes collabs work is when everyone that is taking part in it has sort of the same intention. Like we're all a bunch of creatives that are sort of giving up our, our talents, our equipment, our time to get content out of it. Whether you're a makeup artist, a venue, um, flowers, you know, designers. And that's sort of the intention is for us to all partner with us and we're all contributing and we're all going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. But when one person decides that, you know what, they, they sort of just want to milk the situation it becomes a bit uncomfortable. And I'm sure as a photographer, you've been in situations where people are just like, oh, you know, the rest of the photos, what about this? What about that? And then your, your commitment was here and then their expectation was here. Hmm. So, yeah, that's unfortunately how hmm. I ended up. And like in, in regards to that area, I think there's one other question I've got. So like, have you ever had a, a situation where like, um, let's say uh, you did a photo shoot and then uh, they post the photo without tagging you or... Yeah. In like, terms of the cola. Yeah, in terms of the cola. So actually, mm -hmm. I actually wanted you to talk about that, especially in regards to like when it's a collaboration, when it's a paid work. Mm -hmm. Like, do you expect, uh, when do you expect people to tag you? 
and when do you like you don't it doesn't matter if people don't tag you yeah so i think with a collab it's important because the intention is for marketing purposes Mm -hmm. so i feel like when i arrange a collab i get everyone on the same page all right we're going to do this the date the time this is the agreement this is what's expected and then I just get everyone on board with when we post these photos, you know, you didn't pay for them, I didn't pay for them, no one owns them, we collectively own them, we're going to use them for marketing purposes. Then I do expect people to give credit. Um, and I always give credit. If we do collabs, no matter how small of a part you had to play, mm-hmm. um, even if you did flowers and there's only one flower in the photo, I will make an effort to, to credit you mm-hmm. for that. Um, when it comes to paid shoots, it's a bit of a touch and go. So... I don't expect people who have paid me for my work to tag me, but I try and develop such good relationships with anyone that I do photo work for that mm. 99% of the time they do tag me. Mm. So mm. It, it's not, it, you know. Mm. Yeah, I think I actually agree with you there. Mm. And just quickly around there as well, in, in regards to like tagging and mentioning, do you do, is there like a particular difference for <clears> you? <throat> like when they mention you in the caption? And when they tag you because like so like just for me for instance uh, i don't mind if you don't mention me i would prefer that you actually tag me and mention me <laughs> just because like people, sometimes people don't really read captions they don't even see yeah who, who, yeah so uh is there like a difference for you there like do you prefer one over the other as well I like both mm. <laughs> because it's nice if you see content and you're like, oh, okay, well, this photo looks great. I wonder who did the dress of the photo. And you can sort of just click on the mention and go there. Mm. Um, tags also do sometimes get missed. But what's nice about tags, especially on Facebook, is the moment you start tagging people, that starts appearing on their profile. Mm. So I feel like they both sort of important. Mm. Um, if I had to pick, I would say... I prefer mentions on Facebook and tags mm. on Instagram. Mm. So that's awesome. Sort of... awesome. All right, back to the question. So there's a uh, so in regards to another challenge, uh, have you had uh, what, what challenge have you had in regards to like uh, equipment, equipment wise, like arriving at a photo shoot and remembering that your trigger is back home or something, or like you running late because of a situation where you didn't like know what was gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> or like you wake up in the morning of a shoot and then you get a news that like kind of put you like in a bad mood but mm-hmm. you still have to go do your photo shoot do because your photo shoot. yeah. I feel like that happens more than we like to admit. Yep. <laughs> We've yep. just learned to improvise. Mm. Um, so I feel the, the waking up and not being in the mood to shoot is definitely something that happens. You're not always in your creative space. Mm-hmm. But I feel that if you if you view it as sort of a profession, you know, you're not always in the mood to get up and go to work. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just a matter of being professional about it. So I'm always excited the moment I arrive on set, no matter what personal drama has been going on, no matter how my week's been going, mm-hmm. you get professional me. I'm mm-hmm. here, we're going to have some fun, we're going to capture some memories, we're going to really make art during that time. So I try to put my personal things aside for that. Um, in terms of gear going wrong, people being late, while wow, there's been so many stories over the last six years. We've just learned to adapt. So I shoot high speed, I shoot with on-camera flash, and I shoot natural light. So there has been times where I've had to sort of adapt my lighting methods due to batteries being flat, things not working and me not having the space to sit and figure out why the light's not flashing, then I just, you know, inform the client, you know what, it's fine, we don't need the lights, the sky's looking great mm-hmm. right today. Mm-hmm. We're going to wing this and it's going to be natural light. So whatever challenges I face on sets, whether it be with clients, with collabs, you know, just for fun, um, I try and handle it in a way that I know what the problem is. I am stressing ridiculous amounts on the inside, but I don't let the person I'm working with, the clients and subject, no, because then that's going to affect their vibes. Mm. So usually between me and my assistant, we quickly bash it out, DIY. I have literally even duct taped uh, uh, backdrops <laughs> because they kept rolling down <laughs> for a graduation shoot. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, we've mm. we've learned to to just adapt. Wait, so, like, for the like the graduation, you're talking about backdrop now. So, like, do you, like, have to take, like, a studio set up to the location? Yeah. So, we took a, a studio set up to the location, and there was quite a lot of backdrop, mm. uh, the black backdrop. Yep. yep. <laughs> Um, but obviously the weight plays a massive role so Marcy was working with me that shoots and we get everything up and yeah we're good to go you know it's just event photography no stress 
Marcy comes running to me like the game, the backdrop's not holding. I'm like, Marcy, we've got an hour to do graduation <laughs> portraits. He mm. ends up sourcing a whole roll of uh, masking tape and he taped the crap out of that. And we just hoped and prayed it <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Mm. And like, so like, okay, now that you see, have, have you had a situation where like, what happened like, do you work alone most of the time or do you work with a system most of the time? Um, it depends. I would say 80% of the time I do work with an assistant, mm -hmm. um, just because I like shooting with my light and mm -hmm. it just saves me time on set to have someone adjust the light, move the lights around instead of mm -hmm. having me uh, move around. I shoot on location a lot, so I don't do a lot of studio work. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's very up and go. We're moving and we're setting up lights and then it becomes very time consuming if I have to manage by myself. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then um, also in regards to like uh, setting up on location and stuff like that, do you <clears throat> like, um, okay, I think I'm going to relate this to pricing because mm -hmm. I'm going to get into pricing now. So like, do you always have to go to the venue <clears throat> before the day to like look around and see what's happening there to see what your setup, like, what your setup is going to be like or what you're going to be setting <clears throat> and stuff like that? And does that go into your pricing as well? Because now, because me personally, I charge for transport mm -hmm. for my travel. So now I have to travel back and forth to check the venue. Twice. And then on the day of the shoot again, I have to travel <clears throat> back and forth as well. So is there like a pricing procedure around that that you do? For that. So I would say 95% of the time, it's not necessary for me to go, out the venue, uh, to, go to the venue. Mm -hmm. um, as a photographer, you learn to shoot in different conditions. I mean, you mm. know, if you're going to shoot an event photography and you've got a white ceiling, you're going to be fine. You know, if it's thatched, you might have to adjust your lighting. Mm. Um, if it's outside, time of day plays an important factor. So when I'm in the process of booking the client, depending on what shoot it is, there's already certain things that I've established. Um, so unless it is an extravagant wedding venue that I haven't been to before, then out of my own, I will go out to the venue. Okay. Um, I do incorporate a consultation fee into my larger packages. Okay. Um, when we do smaller lifestyle sessions, mm. um, I have a lot of venues that I recommend to clients. So then I've been there, I've shot down now more or less hard works. Okay. So that's usually how the smaller shoots go. So I would say mm. it would be more for your wedding type and commercial type that I would then go and do sort of a site awesome. visit beforehand. Mm. But other than that, it's not usually necessary. Mm. I usually go prepared for whatever situation. It's going to happen. Or try to be prepared. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever 100% prepared. Mm. Oh, because I, I, I think I also find myself in, in the same situa situation as well. And I always like recommend to people like, you need to train yourself to work in different conditions. Because yeah. even though you go and survey the place, you don't know if something <clears> might change the next day that I actually did. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely on board with you there. And uh, awesome. So, uh, just for people to know what you work with, so like what's in your bag, like what's in your camera bag, like we're talking like what camera do you shoot, what <clears throat> lenses do you have, your lighting, your stands, your modifiers, what, what, whatever you can remember. So, <laughs> <laughs> what I can remember. Yeah. Um, I think my bag's pretty basic. Mm. So I have an on camera, or it's on and off camera speed light that I take with. Mm. That's generally for indoor functions, outdoor functions. I don't use it a lot for any portraiture work. So it's mostly if I have to shoot indoors, the lighting's not great. Uh, I don't have time to set up my speed light, uh, mm. my high speed light, so mm. I'll shoot with that. And which brand is that? <clears throat> uh, it's a Godox. Godox, okay. Um, then my favorite light is my 8200. Mm. Um, so I have two different modifiers that I use. I have a more portable one for weddings that I take with for my okay. couple shoots. Um, and then I have my 90 parabolic that you know I love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely uh, one of my favorite modifier to use. And then in terms of gear, I shoot with a Fuji X-T3. Okay. Um, my favorite lens is my 56. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have a 35 and I also have an 18 to 55, okay. which I don't use as much. Um, but there's a couple of corporate shoots or events where you want to sort of just get a wider angle than I'll just... Mm switch to that one quickly oh awesome it's like even i think the, the zoom lens is mostly just for events at the moment because like <clears> your 56 <throat> and your 35 practically covers everything and uh yeah so are you planning on moving to xt4 anytime soon it's in the pipeline but i feel like i can't say it out loud because i feel like my friends and family are just gonna be like oh goodness <laughs> <laughs> oh okay I'm, yeah i'm definitely looking at it so i'd like to 
um, have the XT4 as my main body and then keep the XT3 as my back. Mm. And in regards to video, are you, are you playing with video? Are you, or do you have challenges with video? What, what are your challenges with video? Or you just know that you want to focus on photos at the moment? My challenge with video is I haven't sat down and talked myself yet. I had this conversation with one of my videographer friends earlier this week. Mm. So over the last two years, I keep telling myself, you know, as I want to sort of venture into video, but I feel like there's so much with photography that I still want to learn and sort of excel at mm. that my time ends up going there. So mm. I haven't yet ventured into video. Mm. Oh, it's going to happen. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> with I, the X-T4. Yeah, the X-T4. yeah. I think before the X-T4, because the X-T4 is basically... Uh, a X-T3 with more uh, features for video, video, basically. That's why the <laughs> X-T4 at the moment was one of my best Fuji camera before I ran away. Before you ran away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying video. Video is awesome, but like, yeah, video is awesome. You, you're going to find yourself doing it every time soon. All right, so uh, I think one more last challenge I would like to hear from you. So, uh, this is a very, so all, all my questions is from what I've seen people talk about on social media and even from my clients as well. So like, uh, what are your challenges in regards to photo editing? So I'm going to break it down for you. So in regards <laughs> to photo editing, in regards to time of delivery, mm-hmm. in regards to your clients being actually happy with the color of it. And uh, because you know, like this, uh, uh, sometimes you edit the photo, it looks blue on your side, and then when your client sees it, it looks red for some yeah. reason. So, like, what are your challenges around video editing and delivery time? Basically? Photo editing, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a standard time that I give, okay. um, just so that you know, I under promise over deliver, okay? So, I have a standard time, um, that I work with, um, and I always try to get my photos out before then. Okay. Um, what I usually do is, because <clears throat> obviously we try to keep our screens calibrated, but yeah. you never know what your clients view in your photos on. It could be a mobile device, it could be a TV, mm. and they don't always view colors the way we view them. Yep. Um, so they aren't really bothered on a day-to-day basis. Mm. So usually when I do send out the photos, I always just check in with the client, say, hey, how things are looking on your side, you know, especially if it's to go to print, because mm. my screen, the way I edit, is obviously calibrated for print. Um, but they might view things on their side and it's overexposed, underexposed, or the color's not looking right. So then we just try and address the problem before it goes to printing. If it is the client's screen, then mm. sit down my screen, hey, this is what I'm seeing on my side. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe do a test print, whatever. I've actually had that situation now with prints where we did prints mm-hmm. and the way it was viewed on my side was 100%. Went to printing, went out fine. But when the client viewed the images on their screen monitor computer, the colors weren't looking so great. Mm. Um, so it's just a matter of sitting down with the client. Um, and chatting to them, seeing, okay, what is the difference? Where are you going to predominantly view it? Is it going to be a problem? That's that's a bit concern. But you honestly have no control over where your clients are viewing your photos. True, true, so right. as much true, as right. you can have all these fancy monitors and calibrate it regularly, mm. you're dealing with clients that it's, it's not a priority for them. It doesn't need to be a priority for them. Mm. Oh, awesome, awesome. And then uh, I think you did mention that already in regards to like, your delivery time, like when the are photos are cool. All right, so that's almost, well, we're almost at the end. So I think what I just wanted to do for me now is you're just going to give the guys that are viewing a bit of a tip in regards to, okay, no, okay, yeah, tips in regards. So I think give them the tips now and then we'll go to the next one. Like any tips in regards to photography, even with a camera or with a cell phone. So not specifically a camera. Not specifically a camera. Yeah, but like with a cell phone. Like if you were to take a selfie... Use, use the shoulder anyway. <laughs> shoulder. So I think one tip, if I can give one tip, it would be uh, windows are your best friend. So always try to find good lighting. If you're outside, find shade. If you're indoors, take a photo next to a window. Window selfies look amazing. Um, and I feel like that can sort of enhance your photo quality just by having correct lighting in your image. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so also quickly as well, can you share with the guys your platform where they can find you? And also what type of photo shoot do you do so that they know what they can book you for as well? But I think start with different platform and the name for your end users as well. And then like, yeah, your type of photography that you show, yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty active on social media. Um, I work under Cloudy Content Photography. So on Facebook, you can find my personal profile under my name. My photography page would be Cloudy Content Photography. 
Um, my website is also quite simple. It's just claudiacontent.com. Um, on Instagram, I've sort of split up a bit just because of the different niches and markets that I shoot for. Mm -hmm. So my main photography page would be uh, Cloudy Content Photography on Instagram. Awesome. And then I have uh, CC Weddings for Cloudy Content Weddings where I post a lot of my wedding work on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm, awesome. so where, where can they find your modeling page as well? My modeling page? We don't talk about my modeling page. <laughs> <laughs> you do model after taking photos of you. My personal Instagram page is my modeling page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, so you can book her for photography, you can book her for modeling, you can book her for marketing. She's, <laughs> she's a really talented guy. It's like she's ready for everything you throw at her. And uh, yeah. Thanks so much for coming through today. I really appreciate it. Thanks so yeah. much for having me. I'm so really excited to see where this journey takes you, me. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty awesome. All right. So, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. And we will see you in the next one.